Hi and welcome or welcome back to the Ravioli podcast. On this episode, I'll be just sharing my experience of finding a room here in Berlin. Like, it has been crazy this week. And disclaimer, like, I just got a room yesterday. So I'm recording this on a Saturday and I have to leave my temporary studio that has welcomed me in Berlin for the first three weeks. I have to leave it tomorrow on a Sunday and today is Saturday and I just found a room and like finally have the keys yesterday on a Friday. So this is crazy and like if my friends are listening to this or like someone close to me, I'm a pretty organized girl. I have to like I do like to do some things spontaneously and You know, not everything has to be accordingly to what I planned. But I kind of stress out when things are not even close to the plan, you know. Like when I cannot even control simple things. And I've just been like all around these days. I like to be organized I like to know what I have to do like especially like I'd like to know where I'm going to sleep next week that's why I was like kind of all over the place this week so you all know by now that I'm in Berlin I came on August 29th and I got a studio for three weeks Because there was a girl which was like a friend from from a friend from a friend. It was like (laughs) so crazy. I don't even know how I got this like for the first three weeks. Because even when I was in Portugal, it was kind of crazy to find something for the first weeks. But she went to Portugal on holidays for a couple of months or a a month. I, I don't really know. And she was subletting her studio... So she, like, you know, hasn't to pay the rent even if she's not here. And I was more than happy to <laughs> to pay her because it was... I would be, like, homeless <laughs> if I couldn't find this studio. I would probably have to stay, like, in an hotel for the first days because I knew nothing. Also, like, I came to Berlin, but I don't have any friends here, like, that I knew previously, you know, like... Of course, now I'm getting to know more people. But when I came here, when I arrived, I had no friends here. So if you have, like, if you are moving to a city where you know some people, even if it's just like one person, at least one person, like, you can try to find a room or a place to stay in like more in advance because you can google it like there are a bunch of websites facebook groups and like whatsapp chats whatever and you can always like ask your friend there like can you just schedule a visit with the landlord and then like when i arrive i we go for lunch and like i pay you or something you know like i pay i just offer you lunch as like a thankful gift you know, I wish, like, I, I wouldn't mind by anyone if I knew someone here before. But I arrived in this studio. I started looking for rooms way back in the day. Like, when I knew I was coming to Berlin, like, when I knew I got in the company, like, for the internship, I was like, I'm going to search for rooms, even though... My Erasmus and like moving papers are not done yet. Like I still have a lot of things at that time to take care of. But I was like, I don't care. I'm going to search for rooms because I didn't even know the reality here. But in Portugal, I think things are a little bit crazy. Not too much because now that I know the reality here, it's nothing compared But at that time, I was like, probably I should start 
Also because it was like my first time looking for rooms, even though last year I was in the master, I was not in my hometown. I was I was in a flat that belonged to one of my relatives, so it was different. And this time I was like, yeah, I I have no idea what I'm going to like what what I'm going to have to deal with. So I better just start whatever. So I just texted like, even though I don't have friends here, I have friends that have friends here, you know. So I just texted them like, can you please ask your friend like some websites? Um, yeah, like just give me recommendations. Where can I find house like a place to stay? And also some people I met in Miami, they were like from Germany. So I was like, since you are from Germany, probably you have friends in Berlin or not, but just help me out, you know. And I was recommended some websites. I really want to tell them, but I don't, first, I don't know how to pronounce some of them. Also, I think the information is going to get lost if I just say them out loud and I don't write them. But I don't know if when I'm going to edit this, I'm going to remember. So if I forget, which is highly likely to happen, just text me and I'll tell you with no worries. Probably I think I'm going to post like an Insta story. Yeah, I'm going to write down like I'm going to post an Insta story just with the websites I went through. And the place I got yesterday was one of the websites. Um, so, and then I'll leave it on my highlights and you can always go there. But, okay, so I just wrote down on my notes and yeah, I went to Wegi Gesu. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to pronounce, but I went through some websites that I was recommended some of them are not in English even, they are only German. So it was really difficult and even like this week, because I'm talking like five months ago, but even this week and when I was really struggling, I would I think I would spend like double of the time searching on those websites because I know I don't know German, so I have to be like with my translator, Google Translator app on my phone, like always open and like some translations, they do not make sense. And I'm like, what the heck? So I have to message people that I know speak German, like, please, can you make sure this is what they want to say? And then I have like to wait that they reply. So language barrier is a really like is a real thing and even though you can finally survive in German without any any level of German speaking when it comes to these things it's like just it's just like something that is on on your way and it pisses me off sometimes I was Going through that website again, I'm kind of lost in my thoughts because I the reason I'm recording this episode today, it wasn't planned, okay? I, I wasn't even planning on recording an episode about my experience in finding a room in Berlin first. And also, like, since I have, like, an entire episode content to talk about... I was not planning on recording it today because I already had like the next episode's topics planned. But then I was like, this was yesterday. And there are so many details that I'm going to forget them. I know it's like it's those kind of things that in the in the meantime, you are like struggling. You are going through a lot like, oh my God, I'm like overwhelmed. But then... A few weeks later and like there's a solution it's no it's no longer a problem you just forget all the details it's like it's like a trauma or something so um yeah that's why I'm recording it today but my brain is stopping a lot because I'm like mentally exhausted 
like literally I'm mentally exhausted because I've been working all week, of course, eight hours. And then every time I left work, I would spend like three hours at least on the streets because I was scheduling visits to places. I was taking transports because they were not even like close one to another. So I just stroll a around Berlin like I was like in a fucking marathon or <laughs> I don't know. Also like carrying everything with me, like my laptop, all the things I brought to work, also my lunchbox, which was empty, but still I was carrying it, like my book, which I don't mind, but still heavy. And it was stressful, basically. But going back to May. May, April, probably April, yeah. April, I started looking on websites and on Facebook groups. I just invited myself, like I requested that I was accepted in those groups. And then I just saw, like, I, I think I posted something saying like, hi, I'm in age, I'm 22 and I'm going to take an internship in Berlin. So I'm looking for a room between these dates and please let me know, like DM me or something. But I was told that I had to be really careful on those Facebook groups because basically 90% of them are scams. And I was like, oh, okay. But I was still naive on the matter. I was still new to this whole thing. So I was going on the Facebook chats because the websites... At that time, I was looking for rooms like maximum, I don't know, five, six hundred heroes because I'm, I have, I'm given a scholarship, and I wanted to be like a room that the scholarship would cover. So you can guess the amount of the scholarship. Like, yeah, it's fucking shitty. But I, at that time, I was like. Of course, I'm going to find something because I was used to the prices in Portugal. Like you pay 200, 300 maximum for a room. And so I was like, okay, maybe 500. It's a quite good room here. I was so naive. I, like when <laughs> now that I'm thinking about it, it's like, what the heck? This is another life, you know, it, this is another Inish. It's not me. And uh, I was receiving a lot of DMs of supposedly landlords. And I was answering them, like, can you send me pictures? What is the rent? Like, is there a contract or not? Some landlords gave me, like, the email. And they said, like, okay, send me a, an email. Or, like, some tenants. They said, like, oh, this was my former landlord. So I'm going to give you my email and that ones I were I was like okay since it's a former tenant I was like probably this is accurate and it's like reliable and I emailed a bunch of people that I don't do not even remember the names no faces like I don't know the rooms I was looking there was a time that I was like okay I have a bunch of options but some I'm like kind of suspecting, like, is this true? Others I was like, I don't know. This is, this seems like so good. Is it real, you know? So I was, uh, again, I was new to the topic. So I was like, uh, I have to take a break. So I took a break, like, I don't know. I don't remember anymore, but I was it was like one or two weeks and I even remember that I was messaging and emailing people when I was in classes in the master like on a Saturday morning because I was like so tired <laughs> of listening to the professor so I was like you better get your shit done in advance and this is the perfect time. Then I was um t I took a break and a few weeks a few weeks later i was like okay i have to figure out like i have to 
make a decision because at that time I was like, yeah, I have, to, I'm going to have a room like half a year in advance. Because I'm so planned and organized and everything is going to be like according to what I w I'm planning and like everything is going to be as I always do, you know. And I thought I could like control my situation. I couldn't. <laughs> Reality check, I couldn't. And so I was like, I have to make a decision. I have a bunch of messages and emails here. I don't even know how how many and like how how um, how can i respond to them all so i have to figure out which ones are reliable or which ones are scams like but i don't even know how to suspect is it scam like how can i figure out this is like okay and it's true and i can go for it so i just texted some friends that were living abroad or have lived abroad or whatever no i'm lying i posted an insta i posted an insta story with like a question box saying like hi i'm looking for a room abroad and i really need some advice how can i spot if it's a scam or not please help me and i got some messages and like what people told me it was like always make sure there's a contract because you are not there you know so it's like long distance so at least you have to say something like first you have to secure the room and also like yeah because they can tell you it's like 500 and then when it comes to the payment day they say like no it's 700 and you have no paper to prove you know i i think i don't need to explain this too many details but they also say like uh, ask like always ask for a video call like ask them to go to the room and like call you from there and this was a really huge advice because I texted like all the ones I was interested in and they were all like oh yeah but I'm away from Berlin these days like everyone told me that and I was like you know like if it was just one or two but like everyone is away like there was even like a lady that I was like do you think I'm going to believe you at least try to lie better because she was like yeah I'm away from Berlin until you pay the deposit and I was like ah okay so you are going to wait either two days or like two months because it just depends on me paying the deposit and the deposit and then you can come to Berlin like you know like it's just like so shitty lies that I was like <laughs> okay and yes this were some of the advice also like always translating the contract if it's only in German like with some someone that speaks German so you are sure what you are like Agree, agreeing with and like sig signing and I was like okay so they all seem scams <laughs> basically that was my conclusion at that time like okay I'm being scammed in every message and email I like exchanged so I'm going to take, to take a break again <laughs> and that's what I did it was like May beginning of June but probably end of May because beginning of June it was like my birthday week you know all the celebrations so I was not even like there you know I couldn't care less about this and I took a break again which lasted until like two weeks before I came here <laughs> no probably like three weeks it was quite a long break you know probably I shouldn't have done that but I was really busy this summer as you might not you might know by now because I like I think I I've said and explained my situation the entire summer episodes and that's why there was no podcast in August which still aches in my heart but um 
Yeah. And then I was like desperate again when I decided look, like, oh, I'm going to Berlin like in a month or three we three weeks because so I better just find a fucking place to stay at least in the first days or like first month because I was coming in the last week of August. So I didn't want to pay like a month rent just for one week and then it would start like September. So I just found like I texted a friend and she gave me the contact of a friend. And that friend helped me a lot in May. Because she gave me like really good advice, even though she couldn't like find me a room. She gave me a lot of recommendation, Berlin wise. And this was in May again. And then in August, when I was like on my take two of finding rooms here, I text, I remember like that at that time she gave me really good advice. And I decided like, okay, it's been a few months. Later, maybe she knows about something now. Like, the no is guaranteed, so there's no problem in asking. Like, asking offends, offends no one, so I don't care. And I texted her again. So this is this was like a friend of a friend. I texted her like, okay, so it's really it, it's really coming close to my departure to Berlin, so. Do you know of something now that it, it has been a few months later? Like, you know, and she was like, okay, I'm going to ask my friends, wait a little bit. And then she was like, oh, there's a friend of mine, which is in Portugal right now. And she was trying to find someone who could stay in her studio for a while until she comes back. She goes back to Berlin. And I was like, oh, okay, like send me her number like her whatsapp and we just talk and that's what i did and she was coming she's coming because she's not here yet she's coming on september 19th which is in like three days but it's like a tuesday so i was like okay i have to find something for sunday because on during the week i'm working and like moving to another place with all my luggage and like cleaning this place that I'm that I've been after eight hours of work it's like it's too much stress for me and like on the weekend I'm more relaxed and it's just like next the next the following weekends I can relax and like I can enjoy Berlin or other places But now I'm just going to do this this weekend because I have time. I don't have to be like stressed because I wake up early. So everything is fine. And she was like, okay, also you don't have to pay me uh, an entire rent. You can just pay me for the amount of days you are there. And I was like, thank you, because this studio is more than 900 heroes i think or like 900 heroes oh my voice is fading away so it was like oh shit this is so much but yeah she then told me that and i was like thank god so yeah then we proceeded to like she sending me the key because then i was in ireland and when i When I was not in Ireland, I was just like at home for one day. And then I was I was going like to my house in the countryside. So it was like I wasn't sure that I could get the key on the mail. So I just asked her like send to my boyfriend's house. And then when she's when she <laughs> when he's with me, he'll give me. That's what he that's what she did. I got the key then like probably one week or like three days before I came she texted, texted me like there was a problem so there there is no wi-fi in the studio I'm sorry and I was like oh my God, how can I survive even though I'll be like working the entire day so I don't need wi-fi during the day because I have there and it's not that I'm <laughs> on my social media you know like still at night to talk to people or like at least to be entertained. So I just downloaded a few Netflix shows, episodes, whatever. 
I also have my books, so I'm always fine. And I just didn't call my parents. <laughs> like, I just, I called them, but not like a video call. So I didn't see them in a while. Then I arrived. And I, I was like, I arrived on the last week of August. And then I was like, okay, I'm going to relax and like just settle in in my new life and like all just like processing all the emotions and like the numbness I was feeling for the first days. And since I had like to wait until the following week to start work, uh, to start working, I was like, okay. Next week on Monday, I go to work and also I just tell my situation that I haven't found a permanent permanent room yet. So maybe someone knows something like, you know, they are living here for a while, for a few years or some for long, a long time. So my, my, they might help me. They might help me. I was really hopeful this was going to happen no so I waited I didn't do anything basically for the first week second week I was here it was my first day of work I told them the situation to like normally just like oh you know like I'm in just a temporary studio like Maybe you guys have heard of someone subletting the room or something. If you have, like, just let me know. No one knew about anything. <laughs> like, no one. And I was like, okay. Glad to know that. Maybe I should start looking for rooms like I should. Me. Also, I asked the friends, like... The people I found on Bumble BFF, I just, when I was texting them, I was like, okay, I don't want to be like, not rude, but like, I don't want to feel that I'm just talking to you because I have to ask this, but have you heard of someone? And no one, basically no one could help me. And I was like, okay, this is like starting to become like a little scary no one can help me, like, what the heck, like, no fucking one, people from different backgrounds, nationalities, that have been, li if, that have been living here for a short period or a long period of time, and, like, no one, okay, so I was like, okay, I have to process this for a couple of days, and then I start, <laughs> So it was the middle of the second week here and I was like, okay, I'm going to the websites again because I trust, I don't trust Facebook again. I have sent a few messages there, but it was like the same vibe and feeling that I felt like on April, in April. So I was like, yeah, I'm not going to bother with this. Like, I don't have the patience and the time to be just like, probably being scammed and not knowing so I just just you know closed Facebook and like the option was not in the table anymore and I went on the website I also started having like a good sense of like geogra geographically I started to have like a good sense of like where are the places here, which stations, what is like feasible, you know, like is it feasible that I take two transports and like I have like I have and it's it takes me like 25 to 30 minutes to get to work or is that too much or like more than an hour is that too much like because I didn't know how like the life here so I had to figure that out on the first days and when I had like a better idea on my mind I was like okay now that I'm looking into rooms I can picture where they are and like even if I go on google maps I already know like if it's close or like how many transports and if it's okay that I have to take that amount of transports or not, you get the idea. And 
I started looking for rooms and on that Friday, the Friday of the second week, I went on a website which was like housing anywhere and basically you have to pay like you can request to book a flat or a studio or a room and you have to pay the first rent and have to pay the deposit. So it's like around a thousand euros that you have to pay like immediately to request a room and then the landlord has 48 hours to answer like if he says no if he like declines the booking you get like a full refund of course and if he says yes like the room is yours you know if he accepts the money goes out of your bank account and then on the second month you don't pay the rent because you already paid it you know okay so i was like guys <laughs> now i'm talking to my parents but I, i was like parents like guys uh i know it's like a bunch of money just like for one time but i cannot find anything and i think this like this is safe because it's a proper website and it's not someone that i don't even trust so they were like okay let's do that because of course they were really worried that i don't have like a place to stay and like even though i think they know i can manage myself and like i can just do the things on my own of course like i'm fucking here um they were like there are th they also know that there are, there are things that i cannot control of course So they were like, yeah, let's do that. But it's, this was a Friday. And one thing that I just realized is that when it comes to the weekend, even like Friday evening already and like afternoon, they are off. Like they don't do, like, I don't know if they have two separate phones or like two separate lives, but when the weekend arrives they are off they don't answer you they don't do anything and i'm not always i'm not only talking about like you know work people like i'm not saying that i was sending an email to my manager and she didn't reply to me on the weekend i'm saying like landlords you know it's like not their it's not their job you know it's just like something they invested so they can get some money but even on weekends they don't answer you so i did this request on a, i did this request on a friday so 48 hours after it was like sunday evening and i didn't add an answer by that time so i was like okay, I did this on a Friday, would you guys let me do this tomorrow, like it's Monday morning, we try once more and then we'll see. And I did that. But the landlord, it was not even like 24 hours after and I got, a, I got an email saying that the room was no longer available, so I was going to be refunded and I was like, oh my God, now... Now we have to start worrying a bit more. And this was like this week, the beginning of this week where I'm recording, which was which is like the third week I've been here. And it I had less than a week to find a place because I have to leave tomorrow. So this was Monday and I have to leave on the Sunday next. Okay, so then I went on the website again and a guy which is like the a bro the brother of a friend of mine he texted me like oh sorry but something came up like i have a friend who is trying to find a person to stay on his room because he's moving would you want to go there i asked like how much was the rent and like where was it because If it was like more than an hour from my workplace, I was like, it's not kind of feasible because I don't have a car, <laughs> you know, but it was okay. 
I thought it was okay at that time. So I texted the guy and we scheduled a visit. So this was Wednesday. I went to visit. It was in an area where I didn't feel safe from the beginning. It was like kind of abandoned and like the people that were there was kind of freaking me out. And like I was alone every time I went to visit places here, I was alone. I went in there and when I arrived, he was like, like when I arrived, he was showing like the, the common areas and like all of that. And then when we got in the room, there was no furniture. And I was like, there is no furniture. And he said like, oh, did I forget to tell you? And I was like, what the heck? This is like, that's the main thing, you know? Like, I know there are people that can be looking for th something without furniture so they can start their, their own room and decoration and all of that. But I'm just staying here for six months. So I kind of need something. I'm not going to invest in a room you know that's like a big deal for me so he said like okay sorry and I was like okay this was for nothing I had no other visit I had no other scheduled visits that day because I I don't know like it was Wednesday but I still had I was like still hoping that I got an offer like this and it was it was going to be it. like why so I should have been like scheduling much more visits, but this was the end for me. I was like, no way. I'm going to send, I'm going home. And it was late because that day it started raining. So I was like in a place also just trying and waiting for the rain to stop. So I was really hungry, but I was like, no, I'm going to sit on the couch. I'm going to pick my laptop and I'm going to text like, 50 people like 50 landlords because I can't take this no more like I have to fucking do it and I don't know who told me this like I really don't remember because it has to be this week but yeah someone told me there was another website called eBay yeah it's eBay it's like uh, to send, it's like eBay, it's to sell everything, also to sell rooms. And I was like, okay, let's go in there. I was already like, a big red flag was that it was in German only, but I had no other option. I was like, okay, I'm not going to ignore websites anymore because they are only in German, because if I do that, that's why probably I'm still homeless. And I just kind of figured out which options did I needed and like what which keywords I needed to know like I already know where is the message box like you know the message button and all of that and I just sit it on my couch for like an hour or an hour and a half messaging a bunch of people like a general message that I wrote like again like I'm in age, da, da, da. and like the amount of time I had to be there and they just like started replying to me either on that day or like on the day after the ones that replied to me that day I all, I immediately asked like can I visit tomorrow which was like Thursday can I go visit it and they were like yes okay whatever so for Thursday I had two appointments I had two scheduled visits to two rooms like two different rooms first one was a room 15 minutes on foot from my workplace so it was perfect location it was basically in Alexanderplatz so it's like the center of Berlin perfect and it was only like I think it was not that expensive, but I don't remember anymore, you know. Well, I'm just reminding you that, again, I was scheduling visits only after work. So this one was like at 5.30 or something, and I was there. And the room was like just as described in the pictures. Like, it was fine because sometimes I'm like kind of worried it's not going to look like the same, you know. 
but it was okay. The house, it was not whoa, incredible, but it's in the center. It's like old building and what could I expect? But then like the guy that was showing me the house was also the only roommate, you know, like just sharing a small flat with a roommate, which is like 30, 35 years old with you, which you don't know. For me, it's kind of freaky, like it's kind of scaring. I'm only 22. And if I was 30, I don't know if I would feel comfortable too. But like, I, I just thought like, I don't feel safe here. Like if I have like at night, if I go to sleep, I have to lock my door and I even, I don't even know if that's possible. Like it would be a place where I would be like spending money and I would be like always freaked out, you know, not that it was like giving me that vibes, but we never know, like trust no one. So I was like, okay, the room is nice. Uh, I have another scheduled visit in a few minutes, so I'll let you know in, by the end of the day, okay? And he was like, okay, yes. So then I went to the other place, which was 30 minutes from the workplace, so I had to take some transports, but 30 minutes is okay. And it was like in a good, nice neighborhood, like really nice. And it was like... um a shared area of buildings so it was like safe inside you know I got there and no I'm lying like first I went to another scheduled visit and when I got there yeah it was this one so the lady wasn't answering me this lady that I, I it was in the ni nice neighborhood she was not answering me and we had scheduled and I was there and I was like, okay, I can't believe I came here to visit and she's not replying. So I just was like, okay, it, this was probably like 6.20. And I was like, I'm going to wait until 7 because I have my book. I'm going just to sit in a park reading my book until 7 because then the sun is setting. So I also don't want to be like here at night all by myself where I don't I don't even know where I am you know because because I didn't I haven't gone to those areas so far it's not that it's like a nice place to visit it's just like a living area so I waited and at that time I was glad I waited because then she replied to me saying like so sorry I didn't got the not notifications but yes, you can come. So I went. And when I was inside the building, the area the area was really good. Like there was a supermarket in front of and like really good area. No complaints about that. But when I was inside the building, she opened the door for me. But then she didn't told me she didn't tell me like which floor. And I was texting her on WhatsApp, so it was not lo it was no longer on the other app where she doesn't get the notifications. And I was texting her and I was like, please tell me the floor. And she wasn't replying. So I was like fucking going on the elevator and just like pressing when. Then I went to the first floor looking into all, like looking into all the doors to see if I could find their surname because here in Germany doors are not like by numbers it's not the first f first left floor first right floor like in Portugal like basically you live in my surname's door you know so I was looking every floor and then I went to the second floor I went to the third floor and I was like if someone have seen me I don't know if there were cameras or not but like I could <laughs> I could seem a little creepy because I was just like kind of like screening the area what the heck and then she finally answered me like she called me and I was like please I was I was getting peace I was like if you don't I I texted her like just please me say, just please me tell me if it's like the fifth floor or the sixth floor because I I wasn't sure she was understanding what I wanted 
because I was like, just tell me which floor is it. And I was like, if you don't tell me now, I'm going, you know, like I'm in a fucking building running around every floor. And then she replied and we went and the flat was like, if I was alone there, it was so perfect. Like it was so modern, so cozy, like it was not big, but it was like cozy, but it, it had the essential parts of a flat until she opens her mouth and says like, okay, so this is the flat. I live here with my newborn baby, just the two of us, but there's only one room, like one bedroom. So if you want, you can take the bedroom and I sleep in the couch with my fucking newborn baby. And I was like, I, I couldn't process. I was like, are you kidding me? Do you think I'm going to ask you and your no newborn baby? Oh my God, there's construction now. I, I'm sure you can hear it. So I'm almost wrapping up this. So whatever. She was like, I was like, do you think I'm going to ask you and your newborn baby to sleep on a couch that you have to make like the bed there every day? And I'm just going to stay in a room where I cannot even go to the living room. But I'm also not going to sleep on the couch and let you go. Like, it's not even like possible, you know, it's like, this is not real. Are you kidding me? Like, probably you are desperate and you have to se secure the place but yeah it's not for me sorry and I was really sad that day I was like I just have one day I just have Friday because on weekends as I said they are <laughs> I don't know on holidays or fucking I don't know what they are doing and I was like I have fucking Friday I cannot believe I've made to this point without a room like I started looking for rooms in April with no success and I took long breaks, but you know, like it's not something that I just forgot and just, I was like, oh, then I'll find something, you know? And this episode is proof because I've been recording for almost an hour. So if I was just so lucky, I it wouldn't be like a topic of, a, of an episode. I was really sad that day, but I already had some scheduled visits for the next day, Friday. So I was like, okay, like if it, if it's not the place that it's meant to be, it's not because it's the right place, you know, like just trust destiny, just trust your fate. And then I came home and... I just scheduled some other visits. I also had one scheduled for today, Saturday. And yesterday when I left work, I went to see the places again. The first one I went, it was so far away from my workplace. It was almost an hour. I had to take like three different types of transports. It was crazy. So that was like a really downside of it. And also when I arrived in the area, I felt really unsafe, like... There were a lot of people that were like just looking at me like, you know, they're from like lower society. But, you know, like I don't want to judge them because of that. It's just like they didn't give me good vibes. And again, I'm like alone. I'm not like living with my family or it's different. I cannot risk it. But I went because I had scheduled it and like I was already there. And the flat was new, like no one had lived there before. And it still smelled like the paintings on, on the wall. So I was like, mm, okay, that's really good. And they are also like, what well, they were the same as in the photos. So I was like, okay, the roommate was going to be a 20 year old girl. So I was like, oh, so that's really great because the roommates were the problem from the rooms I went visited yesterday so yeah I was like okay this is great so I told him like I have another scheduled visit in a minute and I had like three but I just told him like I had one because if I had told him I had a bunch of them I he would say like 
okay, so give me an answer now because I'm not going to wait. But I just told him like, okay, in an hour, I give you an answer. And that's it. Oh my God, I'm forgetting something. Okay, so the previous day when I went to the two houses, the two rooms, and they were shared with suspicious people and like the lady with the newborn baby. When I came home, I was like, telling my parents okay I'm going to try to book another place like the one we tried a, a week ago like just paying the first rent and the, the deposit because at least I can secure a room even if it's like too expensive now then I can always move in a couple of months so we did that and the morning after so yesterday when I went to work I got an email saying like, okay, the place is yours. It was a studio. It was not that close to the company, but at least I had a place to stay and it was not cheap at all. But, you know, like I was kind of just giving up in everything. And w and they would like, you pay that and then you get the contact details of your, of your landlord as soon as you are accepted. So I emailed him and I texted him on like I both sent an email and a message just because I had to say something immediately because it was kind of like time was running out and it was midday and there was no answer. So I was like, I'm going to call. Them. I'm going to call him. And it was like he was it was like a company you know it was like an agency not the direct landlord and uh, and they were like okay so you were accepted and i was like yeah i wanted to s to know the details the documents since i'm moving on sunday which was the, the date i requested on the website and they were like yeah but you cannot go on sunday because now we have to confirm the documents you submitted and we have to like write the contract and then send it to you so this process takes like four to five days and i was like yeah but i selected september 17th on the website so it allowed me to move on on sunday and on the email confirmation it also says that the starting date is sunday so not my problem but i have to move on sunday and he was like yeah but that's not possible and i was like this is a problem, like, this is your problem, I don't care, so if you don't figure another solution, I'm going to cancel it, and he was like, okay, so probably you should cancel, and I was like, okay, I went on the website, and I was cancelling it, and, like, just giving the reason why I was cancelling, and then they, they, like, there was a pop-up, like, saying, because it was too late, because it was two days before the check-in, you are not going to be refunded. And I was like, I paid almost 2,000 euros to fucking secure this place and you are saying that I'm not going to be refunded because I called him again and I was like, okay, so on the website, accordingly to the cancel policy, it says that I'm not going to be refunded, but this is not something that I found like a place last minute so I want to cancel now. It's just your fault. It's not mine. So you have to figure it out because I'm going to get the money back. I don't care. And he says, and he agreed immediately. He was like, yes, yes, uh, no problem. I, in fact, I can cancel for you if you want. And I was like, okay, but I'll, I'll keep an eye because uh, <laughs> I only believe it when the money is back on my account. And that was it. So when I got out of work, I went to visit the first place back where I was talking about. The one that it was in a shitty neighborhood, but the room and the flat was new. The roommate was like kind of my age. So that was a really good point. And then I told him I was going to visit another place. So I just was searching which transports do I had to take there and it was like three transports again it was like an hour to get there and I was like oh my god I cannot even make it in time whatever so I just sat on the bus stop looking into my phone and waiting for the bus 
and then I got a message on the app, on eBay app for like the houses and the guy, because I sent him the general message when I was sending them on Wednesday and he replied, but I didn't answer. So probably because I was like so wo overwhelmed by all the messages, Sam just slipped, slipped away and I don't know what happened. And then when I was on, on the bus stop, he texted me again, like saying, Okay, I don't know if you are still interested, but here is my number. You can call me. And I was like, I'm going to call you. The room was cheap, comparing to all the rooms I've seen the previous days and on that day. And according to the photo, it was like perfect. So I called him saying like, hi, can I be there in an hour? And he was like, yeah, sure. You can come when you want because I'm here. Like, I'm going to stay here today. So no problem. I was like. I don't know how to, am I going to do this because I have like four scheduled visits today. I don't know where I'm going to like insert this last minute one, but I have to figure it out. I don't care. It's going to happen. But with no hopes, because at this time I was like, I cannot go into a home expecting it's going to be mine because I already just fantasized about it and it it didn't happen. So I was like, Okay, I went to the place I was, I had scheduled before, not this one last minute, the one I already had scheduled in the day before, which was far away, but I took an Uber because it was not that expensive and I was like, I'm not going to stay like one hour in transports, I cannot make it, so I have to go. When I arrived there, the landlord was not answering me. Like I was in his doorstep, but he was not answering any message. So I did the same thing. I was like, I'm going to wait until like, I'm going to wait like 10 to, to 15 minutes. And then if he, if he doesn't reply, I'm going to go to the place that just came up last minute when I was on the bus stop. I don't care. And that's what happened. When I looked into my left the metro station was there, which was the one I had to take. And it was like only one line of metro. And I was like, this is perfect. I went. It got me like 10 minutes to get to the last minute place. It was in Mitte, which is like a really good area of Berlin. <laughs> Fancy. And, um, and then I was like, the guy was texting me on WhatsApp. And he gave me like the exact address, like postal code, the number of the outside door and also he already like he gave me immediately his surname so I could like ring the bell and it was like just perfect information detailed what I needed which is kind of what normal people are supposed to do but coming from my previous experiences it was like uh yeah you know like I cannot expect too much from people here so um, I rang the bell. He told me immediately, okay, it's in the third floor. Don't forget. And I was like, fine. There was no elevator. So I was like, oh my God. Because when I go into a place, I always look if there's an elevator because I know, I know how much I struggled coming into the second floor of my studio with all the luggage. And all the places I went were not in the second floor. They were either on the third or the fourth. So it was like, oh my God. I went on the place. He he said there were like two roommates. It was him and another one that was still studying. Um, two boys. Two boys, guys, not boys, you know, like two guys. The room that was in the website was also the same, like, it seemed the same. It has a couch and a desk besides the bed. So it was like, it's huge, you know, for what I was expecting. All the shared areas like kitchen, bathroom and all of that are really clean. And then I was like, okay, but uh, I have to move here on Sunday because like they don't work on Sunday. So I was kind of scared. He was like saying no. And he said, yeah, sure. Like you can move now. You can have the key now if you want. And I was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> and he was like, no, like here is the key. Look, we have a lot of spare keys because I'm always losing them. But here's your key. And I was like, no, 
this is not happening. Also, I'm not going to tell, but like the price was really good. It was like the cheapest one I found so far. So this was kind. I cannot describe this. This is my miracle. This is my miracle. Like I have no other words to describe this. And I was like, I'll take it. Like I have. I'm not going to think anymore. Still had two more visits that day, which was yesterday and one today. But I cancelled them. I said like, yeah, you know, like I found something, but thank you. The 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 other guy that I was like, he was waiting for my answer. I also told him, and I was like, but you were so kind to me that if I know someone, I'm going to help you find like a tenant because I really recommend it. Like not a neighborhood, <laughs> but I I was not going to tell him that and like. If it was close to my workplace, I would consider it, you know, but it was not close. So I got a room, you know, like I've been re fucking recording this for more than an hour. You can see how I struggled and like, I'm not there yet. So I'm kind of also scared that I'm recording this without knowing like if I like to be there, but we'll see, you know, I would forget all these details if I was recording this like, one month later with all an experience living there so i just recorded it i don't care i hope it's going to be fine like i have to trust the process because as i can see everything comes when is the right time also when i was i when i left the metro station and i was walking to the door of my new place i it was like sunset hour and the sun was like so pretty like the sun was setting and like the the tv tower was in like a really good landscape sunset view and i was like just recording for future amusement and future files and i was like this is a sign that i'm everything is aligning so i don't know like what's my conclusion like i would really like to have some recommendations to give to you but if you are in another country and if you don't have anyone you know on the place you are moving to it's really difficult because it's really hard to find a place that you are sure you are not going to be like scammed you know and for example, there are two girls that started an internship at the same time as I did in my company. But one is staying at a friend's place and the other one, she was already studying in Germany. So it was really easy for her to find a room because she could visit it. And they all told me that like, yeah, so it's really difficult. I don't know if it's like Berlin prob problem or it's like, European wide I hope not because you know it's kind of really shitty but this is my experience like also one thing that I was thinking when I was going to the place that eventually I got but at that time I didn't know I was just I was just thinking like this is a big problem because even though I'm kind of like just smiling and I'm not crying if I face the reality, I really don't have a place to sleep. But I was just thinking like in my heart, like I was so happy because I just feel so deeply grateful to have this opportunity because I'm fucking living my dream. Like even though I'm not in a mansion, of course, I'm not in a private studio. Like, you know, like I'm not in the perfect place, but that's nothing for me like i'm living the dream because my dream was to move abroad you know and i don't know what the future is awaiting for me i don't know where my career will lead me like i don't know where i'm going i'm just living kind of day by day and it's going fine for me which is which is kind of a surprise because as i said i'm a really planned person i'm a really organized girl no big surprises in my life you know like there are big surprises in my life but 
they are expected, you know, so not surprise. It's just achievements that I can achieve. Okay, so that's it. Like, I was feeling so grateful that I, I like, these days were so stress stressful, but I didn't even cry because I was just like, you know, expect nothing, appreciate everything. This is one of my main mantras because that's it like everything that will come along the way it's going to be good because i'm just fucking living in the moment so i guess this is the episode i was going to record another one now but i have to have lunch <laughs> because i'm going to meet a friend in the afternoon i'm kind of sad because i now i have to pack everything again like not that i took a lot of stuff out of the luggage but still, uh, some of the things, you know, and the luggage inside, it's a bit messy. Also, I just I just washed some clothes this morning so they can dry and then I can pack them tonight. And tomorrow morning, I'm going to clean the studio and then I'm going to move everything for my new room because I'm going to give the keys back after lunch. So that's kind of my life. I hope you liked my wild adventure in finding a room and I hope that if you are planning or if you are currently looking for a room in another place, it's not this stressful. If you want to know the websites, again, just text me like there is no worries, like feel free. I love talking to you guys and we'll talk next week. Bye. Mm-hmm.